This video is sponsored by Squarespace. In the past, we've had a look at the best night settings for both GoPro and Insta360 and been pretty disappointed with how the night quality turned out in last week's Osmo Action 3 review. I felt the need to find a fix because surely it can't be that bad. So in this video, we're going to head out for a night ride and try some different settings in hopes to find a remedy for last week's poor performance. Now before we move on, these are the general settings that I'll be using. White balance set to auto, unless stated, all filmed in 4K and all shot in 10 bit, but ungraded so you have an understanding of what the comparisons look like straight out of the camera. Now as a lot of you guys have mentioned in last week's video, the reason why the image quality is so blurry is because of the digital image stabilization. This here is the video that I took last week and you can see it's very extremely unusable. Every time I move my head, it, you just get that crazy, ridiculous wash of blur. And here are the exact same settings with Rocksteady turned off. And you can see that it actually, it does fix the issue straight away, but you have no stabilization. This is now stabilized in post and you can see that the issue comes back now. So it doesn't matter if you're stabilizing in post or if through the camera, you're still gonna get the motion blur because of digital stabilization. I might have worked out a fix, which I'll get to a little bit at the end, but for now, bear with me. We're gonna go with Rocksteady off, test out all the ISOs and what they look like, and it'll help make the end section of this video make a little bit more sense. So first off, I like shooting in 25 frames a second. That's just my personal preference. And with the shutter speed set to auto with a max ISO of 800, the image quality isn't that bad. It is actually usable, but we can only use this setting with Rocksteady turned off. It is quite dark having a max of ISO 800 so let's crank it up to 1600 and see how that looks. Now for me ignoring the whole Rocksteady issue this looks great. I feel like it's a good amount of light that comes in. Some sections are a little bit blown out there um, but I think you can just fix that in post. But overall, it's a nice bright image. You can see everything that's going on. It looks great. Now we can only use this with the proc steady turned off. Now we're in manual mode at 1 50th of a second with ISO at 800. There's a massive difference with how bright the lights are. The shutter set to auto in the previous example was most likely much slower, which allowed more light to reach the sensor. Now that we have it set to 1 50th of a second, it only has a limited amount of light to hit the sensor. Stepping up to ISO 1600, we're seeing a bit of an improvement with the light, but not a lot. One more step up to ISO 3200. I feel like we're hitting the sweet spot at this shutter speed anyway. There's enough light for it to look good without too much grain. As you increase your ISO, you're introducing more grain and noise into your image. Now at ISO 6400, we're stepping into grain or digital noise territory. But the noise isn't that bad considering we're up to 6400 ISO and we're shooting on an action camera. Now the good thing about shooting with the ISO range set from 100 to 6400 means that if the setting gets bright, the camera will automatically adjust its ISO between that range, which is great to reduce noise and a blown out image. But there is the option to have it fixed to a particular ISO if that's what you prefer to do. You can just notice the grain around the edges of the screen there, all in those dark spots. You might just notice a little bit of fuzziness. That just comes with the ISO. And now we're doubling that again. This camera goes up to a whopping 12,800 ISO. Like that is mind blowing, especially for an action camera. I can't believe they've done this. And I don't think you'd really ever want to use it, but it's there just in case you need to. And then if you wanna go on post, you can denoise it as well, but you do lose a lot of image quality. It looks all blotchy. It's very extremely fuzzy. I tried shooting at 30 frames a second with the shutter set at 1 60th of a second to see how it would look. This was usually my preferred settings shooting with a GoPro at night. But you can see here that it is quite dark compared to 1 50th of a second. The shutter speed's moving just a little bit faster, which allows less light to hit the sensor. Now with my personal preference with the white balance set to 3200 Kelvin, you get that awesome blue come through almost like you're in Tokyo or some sort of cyberpunk setting. I think it looks wicked. Okay, so now I know what the ISOs are capable of. We know what the image sensor is capable of in a low light setting, but we still have that stabilization issue and we need stabilization because that is unbearable to watch. I bet, I'm sorry about that. So seeing as though we go up to 12,800 ISO, I tried setting the shutter speed to 1 100th of a second. This is what I usually set the Osmo Action 3 to with an ND filter on during the day. So now we've got Rocksteady turned on. We're at 25 frames a second. For the shutter speed, we're at 1 100th of a second with an ISO up to 12,800. Now I feel like we're getting somewhere a little bit here, but ISO 12,800 is far too grainy. Now let's see how it looks with a lower ISO with the same settings. So now we've dropped it down to ISO 1600. You can notice the difference in light, but you can also notice the difference in picture quality as well. It's far less grainy and this is very usable. It's actually pretty, pretty good, but I'm very keen to see what it looks like at ISO 3200. 
Okay, I think we are getting towards the sweet spot here, in my opinion anyway. This looks this looks great and very usable. We've minimized the blur. There is still just a slight, slight blur moving left and right. But this is the shutter speed I use for when I'm cruising around with the ND filter on. And I think it's usable, but it's nice and bright. We've got 3200 ISO and all the lights are nice and bright, nice and shiny. And we can go in and post as well. The dynamic range on these cameras are pretty good. So you can go out there and bump it up a little bit more if you want. And I think it's a good amount for the noise level as well. It's not too grainy. The picture quality is nice and definitely usable. And now I had to, of course, test out the same settings, but with white balance set to 3200K to give it a blue look. And it looks pretty cool. I do like the standard auto white balance as well. I think the auto white balance does a great job at picking up the colors and everything like that to give you a nice balanced profile. But you know, if you wanted to set your, your white balance to 32K to give it a mad John Wicky sort of style, yeah, this is it. And then I thought while we're here, why not bump up the shutter speed to 1 20th of a second to try to just minimize that blur just a tiny little bit more. And because we've made the scene a little bit darker, by increasing the shutter speed, I've increased the ISO to 6400. So it is a bit grainier. I probably could have done with just leaving the ISO where it's at, but it looks not too bad. It is getting that full grainy sort of territory where it looks a little bit blotchy, but going through the tunnel here, it just looks pretty cool. It's nice and it's very bright, but yeah, stoked. I think we have found a fix. So there we have it. We have a decent nighttime image quality from the Osmo Action 3. All is not lost. Last week's video, I was, I was devastated with the nighttime, how it turned out, and I didn't have a chance to go out and do it again. So that's why I had to test the settings and I'm stoked with the results that we found. Dial one of these settings in, whichever one you prefer, which by the way, let me know in the comments below. And then away you go. Also, don't forget that you can save your favorite settings to your custom mode so that you can access them super quick by pressing the power button once, which allows you to cycle through them, saving you a whole bunch of time instead of sitting there dialing all your settings in every time you wanna ride at night or something. You just go boop and then ride. Don't think about it, just go. Well, I hope this video helped restore some faith that the Osmo Action 3 is capable of shooting in low light settings and that it helped save some time in deciding which settings to use. If it did, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel if you're new here and I'll see you guys in the next vid. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to create your website. Connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content. Manage your members, send email communications and leverage audience insights all on one easy to use platform. Create a community on your Squarespace website with a fully integrated communicating system that supports threaded comments, replies, and likes. Use their powerful blogging tools to categorize, share, and schedule your posts too. Extend Squarespace's already powerful e-commerce capabilities with Squarespace extensions. These new third-party tools can help you manage inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, reconcile and file sales tax, and ship items across the globe. Display posts from your social profiles on your website and automatically push website content to your favorite social media channels so your followers can share it too. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash motofuels to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much Squarespace for sponsoring this video.